When it comes to stunts, vanity is not in my vocabulary. Stunt professionals are invisible. You always thought that the actor was the one who did its stunts. It's part of the business. I'm not there to make myself look good. I'm there to make the scene look great along with the men and women that I'm working with and enhance the storyline. If they see us, somebody's doing something wrong. We should be invisible. We should blend in. But we shouldn't be pushed aside. Stunt performers should ultimately have no fear. Men and women, we love to be able to fight, tangle, wrestle. We just have a natural want to not shine in the light, and the limelight, we're the shadow warriors. My name is Federico and uh, I'm a stuntman. I'm Italian and I started doing stunts in New York about a year ago. That's when I moved from Los Angeles. I never really thought about becoming a stunt person. My background is martial arts. I was competing in martial arts since really like young age. After high school, I moved to Shanghai, trained for like four years. And during those four years, I started actually working as stuntman. I started realizing how to put like martial arts on set and in front of the camera. And the idea that I had is this one. The scene starts with her outside the building, talking to the phone, saying something like, I said I want it back, give it back to me. On the other side, somebody at the phone and says like, uh, come and get it, bitch, or something like that. Fine, like close, comes in, goes to the elevator, first guy is there, boop, 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 knocks him out. Another guy, blah, 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 knocks him out. And you know, again, you were thinking, everybody, I would like to, they're thinking about her son or something. I am Hannah D. Scott. I'm originally from London. I've been here for seven years now. I've been on stage most of my life, always been an athlete, and then that's kind of like segued and led me into, into stunts. You know, I certainly remember as young as probably 18 to 20, starting to ask about stunts, but then life took me at that point. I needed something fresh. I wasn't in a place where I wanted to be. So that was just one of those, I'm gonna try it, see what happens, and then seven years later, I'm still here. Anything that you guys wanna show off in the thing, anything that you say, oh, I'm really good at this, I really wanna do that. I'm really good at making it look like I died. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so like <laughs> anything really brutal that you wanna do to me, do it. I'm, I'm, I'm actually also a pro wrestler, so I can make things oversell and look really Sweet. awesome. My name is Frank Perrin, and I am from Dayville, Connecticut, I originally wanted to be a marine biologist. I always loved animals and I was always drawn to the beach. When I was 15, I joined the cast at the Connecticut Renaissance Fair. I started to get into their fight cast. I picked up a lot of work in stage combat there and one thing led to another. As I got older, I started looking at film and I started realizing that, hey, this is uh, probably a much more professional and a much more um, <clears throat> rewarding and profitable uh, aspect to pursue. I have an idea of the choreo already, and I'll show you some moves, and then you tell me if you like it, and if not, they add stuff. My name is Anthony Hong. When I was a kid, I was the total opposite of a daredevil or a crazy kid. Uh, I was really quiet and shy, so my mom stuck me in karate lessons. It took a while for me to get out of my shell. So my family, uh, when I first told them, they, first of all, they're, they're totally against the idea of me being in entertainment. The circus was the one that really set them off. I was like, Mom, Dad, I got in a Ringling Brothers Circus, the greatest show on earth. They're like, Great. You do know we came from Vietnam. I had to dodge like all these bombs and uh, getting shot at and sneak on a boat, come over here uh, for you to get a, a higher education and you're gonna become a clown. Like seriously? Now uh, my mom, she's more accepting of the fact that I'm a stunt performer. But yeah, she, she used to say, my son used to pull his pants down for a living. Now he falls down, so it's kind of cool. There are several different facets to the business. You know, I came in with a martial arts background, so I just assumed everybody fought. When we arrive on set, you're already gonna have, unless you're listed as utility stunts, where you could be recycled and to do certain things and be hidden a lot. You're usually brought to set and you have a specific action, you have a specific role that you're going to fulfill. There's the expected skills as a performer, and then beyond that, it's what you have to offer as an individual. So if I were to break it down into three primary categories, I would say there's performers, technical, and coordination. Every one of those has a plenty of offshoots underneath that 
our specialties. It's such a broad spectrum from utility, safety, rigging. You have your stuntmen who are more into your high falls, wire rope, rigging work. Doubling, you know, where it's a literal imitation game. I would say I'm a ground and pounder. Um, I go pretty hard to the ground. What I like to term the bruisers, you know, the dudes who just can take a beating and for whatever reason just get back up every time, but they're the fall guys. I'm pretty sure that everybody has a specific, you know, skill that has their strong focus and then they just, the more you learn the better, you know, for the job. Cool, I'll show you some uh, choreo. This would be the first guy downstairs, close to the elevator. Right? So you come from the side, you just cover shoulders like, where are you going? This. From here, I was thinking something like, hold them, you lock them up, mm -hmm. right for your throat, boom. Then slide, mm -hmm. take down, bam. Something like that. I'm a huge fan of the Hong Kong movies. I would always watch and try to imitate those movies. And there are always really wide angles and really beautiful scenes. At the same time, though, that it means that whoever is performing has to be a real martial artist. So there is no really cheating. And that's why it looks so great. Um, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Thanks. Cool. So I have another guy. So. This was, yeah, so this would be when she comes out from the elevator. So come with a straight like cross. Uh, then she's gonna try to do a little leg kick. So one, two. Ooh. To create a successful action scene, I think the first step is just figuring out if it even belongs there or how long it should be. The thing about to make it work is it's a, a fight's actually, it's a, it's a dance, there's a rhythm to it. It should be so well choreographed and rehearsed that by the time you get to set, it's just plug and play in productions just like that. Cool, so for now, let's have you doing the first and last guy, and you have the second and third guy. Awesome. So it goes him, and then him with the leg, and then him with the takedown, and then him with the final boom, 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 boom. No, the final is that. Is okay, that so just whoever walks into me, just. Yeah. <laughs> I know that, which order it is. Yeah, nice yeah. and slow. It's a really a collaborative effort. The person that I approach first is the stunt coordinator. On the day, the coordinator is your boss. Director comes over and tells you to do something. You turn and look at the coordinator and say, is that cool, man? Is that OK with you? And they'll make adjustments. Coordinator is the top of the line guy. He is your brain. He is your go-to guy. The stunt coordinator, by that point, they've already got a lot of it worked out and they have a good idea of where they want everybody and what's going to happen. The stunt coordinator is the mastermind. The stunt coordinator makes it happen and he's, got, he's the action designer. Uh, action. That was good. Yeah. So the movements are a little bit small. Everything feels a little bit too small. Okay. So that punch at the end, bam, go through. Like okay. go past, cross his face more. Mm -hmm. It's still going to be this. It's just you guys know. So, but bigger movement in everything. You have to work with whomever you're fighting with. Most importantly, just be in present time, be there in the moment. See that kick or that punch coming in, you will have enough time to block it or move out of the way. And maybe the director will be like, oh my God, I love that. Can you do that again? We're going to try a few times. If after the, let's say the third time, I'm doing it, I still like, guys, it's a bit too much because of the, the stairs, the elevator. We need an entire 12 hour day to shoot this to do it one shot. By the third time, I'll be able to understand, it's like, yeah, I can do it. If I do it two more times, I'll get it. Or it's like, nope, like we need that 10 hours. So then we'll just cut it. Good job, guys. That was fun. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. You guys are awesome. Appreciate it. That was fun. Back. When I moved here, I was coming across the Queensboro Bridge. That was like the first time I saw the skyline and I thought, oh shit. That was, I think, my first thought. Just being in Manhattan, looking at the transit map and you're like, how do I get from point A to point B? Hey, I've got a call time in Brooklyn at 8 a.m. How do I get there? I'm looking at the map, I didn't know what I was doing. It was so overwhelming. I grew up on 40 acres of trees. So it was just very overwhelming, exciting. I had to get a little bit more adjusted to the pace of life in New York, how to get around, and then to be able to meld with people 
in New York City at the same time. The hustle and bustle, apples and oranges, black and white, man, it was tough. But got a lot better at it. I'm originally from Mass, so only a few states away, so I figured that's the first market I worked. It is amazing coming down here to work with the stunt community here in New York because everyone is so supportive of each other. They're always giving you advice, always pushing each other to do better. I may be biased, but I think the New York City stunt community is very loyal and also very accepting. I have heard some horror stories, but I haven't experienced any of them. What I have experienced is genuine enthusiasm. I love the, the New York community. It's a small community. I think there's something great about that there's fear that it becomes saturated. Having that small group, I feel like most of the time I'm gonna walk on set and at least know someone and feel comfort in that, especially being new. There's a lot of work here. And if you work hard, you will work, I think. I've got two bags here. This one being my main working kit. So I have a few different back pads, this being my standard one that I, I wear most of the time. A lower lumbar protector, you can spin it around if somebody's taking a, giving you a kick to the chest. All kinds of knees and elbows and spot pads. This has my hard shins, bigger, bulkier knee shin. You need to have a harness. It's got 50 pick points on it. Just another variation of a back protector. This is my rigging and or safety bag. Uh, Multi-purpose tool. Different pairs of gloves. The good old laser pointer, which also doubles as a measuring tape. Splicing kit. Uh, this is a span set and just a notebook. And I think that's it, man, surprisingly. Doesn't seem like as much right now. Up until today, when I'm going home today, which I'm sure it'll happen now, but I've never been stopped by uh, a police officer and asked what's in my bag. There's so much going on in New York, and yeah, it's easy not to. So the plan is we're gonna try to do a single shot for the first three fights. And we are bringing in Anthony and Steve to help out because we didn't have enough people. They didn't have time to rehearse, but everybody's busy. We are just trying to help out. It's tight. We really made this up in like a day and we have just a few hours to shoot it. So we'll see. But again, we're gonna pull it off and yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be fun. Boom, and then you stick it and then you grab it behind. Okay. okay. Back on, boom, push you back, and then boom, and then, yeah. And we are rolling, and action, fire. Yeah. difficult thing you ask someone to do is sacrifice their body to hit the ground to sell the shot. You don't naturally throw your body on concrete with no pads except the pads that's on your body or down a metal flight of steps for fun. You either can do it or you can't. You're gonna have a first time on everything. You know, hopefully you can get those first times in training. The consequences of failure can be pretty dire. The true professional, someone who really wants to do this, kind of knows never to say you can do something and that you can't, but a lot of people think I've done it a couple of times so I can do it. No, that doesn't count. Don't tell a coordinator, yeah, I can do that, 
unless you are very proficient at it. I've had a couple of my friends, unfortunately, pass away with different stunts going wrong. Once you're on set, you never know what happens. Stunts is not something to take lightly. Make sure everybody knows what the fuck they're signing up for. There's some fresh people here that haven't been here before, so obviously the other ones are gonna hear the same thing, and it's okay because you can't hear it enough. This is about being prepared to become a stunt performer for real. It's the only profession in the world where what you actually do is not exactly how you do it. It's not about knowing what to think, but it's knowing how to think. If you know how to think, you can solve problems. And filmmaking is nothing but solving problems. But this is like, you know, if you're gonna go to college and be a doctor, you gotta do crazy internships 18 hours a day and work for free at hospitals, all that. You gotta think that that's what you're doing for this career. I've been doing this for 22 years. I've been in the union since 95. Every day I learn, every film shoot I learn. Everybody is expendable in our business. Doesn't matter how great you think you are. Believe you me, that film production's gonna keep going if you, you know, if you can't make it on Monday. New people coming in, where do they acquire the skills? Until recently here on the East Coast, there were not a lot of places to go. We lost two young, incredibly talented stunt performers, and that affected me profoundly. And I realized these young kids don't have a place to train and started teaching free once a month. Then I really realized that they really don't have any skills. And the East Coast was becoming so busy that they were getting stunt jobs simply because they fit the size and the look of what the directors were looking for. But their skill sets was not professional. So I decided to create the full day clinic. I got them prepared for the expected skills. Then I started introducing them to the other skills so that they can be like, oh man, wow, this is way more difficult than I thought. And that's super important because what we do as stunt performers is incredibly dangerous. When I train here at my house, I go through the expected skills. When I have a full day seminar and I bring in stunt coordinators teaching more advanced level types of stunts, it's to introduce these young performers to what they think they can do. So it's important that people get introduced to that so that they make the choice if they want to be proficient on it. You can lose your life on the simplest stunt, but if you have your expected skills together, that's not going to happen. Most people can't do what we do. It's just the truth. It's not just anybody can do stunts. We are professional blurs. We are professional crash test dummies. It's just what we are. There's no really walking around that. So many of these kids have an illusion, think that, oh, I'm gonna be an action actor. But that doesn't make you a stunt performer. Stunt performers aren't rock stars. We make rock stars look like rock stars. That's the whole point. Being a female or a girl in this type of an industry, the challenges I may have faced were quite difficult. For years and years, it was just stunt women weren't hired to be the action hero. There weren't even television shows really that had the stunt women. The guys, of course, you can do a lot of the stunts. If you're padded up, you can do certain things because you have long sleeve, you have pants, you have all this. But with a girl, we have these short, skirts and these high heels. If the person you're doubling is in four-inch Jimmy Choo's and running down the street, you have to do that as well. I can't imagine doing a car hit without being, <laughs> being fully covered, but if you're in a dress, you're in a dress. Because it's such a male-dominant business, they feel that a woman won't be able to come up to the plate and do a stair fall. You know, they're wrong because we do it exactly the same. Stunt women are pretty tough. We can give back what we get and we're just like, we don't put up with it. We have been presented with so much more opportunity now. They are action heroes now themselves. They are no longer the sidekick. I've done things that nobody else has been able to do. Now it seems like we're getting a chance to show our talent, see that, hey man, oh, there's badass women out there, we can fight, we can, we're ground pounders as well and as good as the guys do them. Are you good to I'm good. fight good. it? We've been doing the shot with uh, a mat there for us to land for safety, but we keep catching the mat in the shot, so 
we want to get a clean shot of the hit to the ground, so we're going to do one. If we hit our head on the floor, concussion, but you know, tuck your chin, we'll be fine. Okay, we are rolling. In action. Great job, guys. You get it? You good? You good? Oh. That's it. That was fucking done. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. You want to check it out? Boom. That was good. Boom. Bam. Who's there, though? Boom. Everything. True that. That was good. Boom. Mm. Boom. Mm. Boom. Boom. I think this is it, guys. Looks good. Nice. And she works. Awesome job. Great job, guys. Thank you. Pew, pew. Thank you. See you guys in my trailer. Not done yet. Good job. It was definitely a job. Yeah? Why don't you fucking come and get them then, bitch? Fine. I'll be waiting. Keep an eye out for her. This is why I like you. But you don't want to do it like this, do you? I personally think that the New York community is definitely like expanding. So when I started in the business back in 95, 
There wasn't a lot of work in New York. I mean, my first few years, maybe I get a job a year. Now it's, God, it's come a whole different way. New York has the best combination of infrastructure and financial incentives. As studios get established here and things like that, and the infrastructure keeps growing, then it becomes a destination for, for production companies. New York's very appreciative of films coming to New York and television coming to New York. They're a big supporter of film and television here. So I think that's a big thing when you have the city behind you. The challenges the New York community faces is always having to have that comparison to L.A., I think it's always been, you know, New York versus L.A. People up here in New York are just as well trained and just as well dedicated uh, to the craft as others are. There's healthy rivalries with everyone and every industry has it. And it's only normal that with a place that's up and coming like New York, other places are going to want to step their game up and, uh, and make sure they stay kings of the mountain. I think what that just does is promotes better performers. You just want to better yourself to keep on top. I think we're moving to a positive direction where it's just gonna step the game, that's it. New York is so contracted where you can run into somebody on the train one day and then see them again the next day. California is spread out, you, you drive everywhere. Here we're on subways all the time. We have that opportunity to be able to stay in touch and to be able to cheer each other on. And I think that just makes us a little bit more of that tribe. I've been continually impressed with how generous the larger part of the community is with both their, their knowledge of skills and just being open to having new people come in. I feel very, very lucky that I'm in a position that, you know, in my first jobs I worked with people who've been around for 20 years and I have this incredible hub of knowledge to draw from. We have some really skilled and talented people here. I mean, truly skilled and talented. And we have a nice group of younger stunt people coming up in this business that I think are gonna make a huge impact on this business. I'm hoping for the uh, New York community that all these new shows and all these new movies coming out here to New York, one, bring us a lot of work, and you know, the different kind of works that are coming in, then that means that a lot of different stunt people can show their talents in whatever realm they are. And we just wanna be you know, appreciated, I think that's the big thing. Recognized. You can't have a movie without some kind of action. We really are the heart and soul a lot of times. It's a community I want to be a part of, which is part of why I am so hungry for this career right now. I don't think New York will ever just disappear. It's far too beautiful of a city, has way too much to offer. I can only hope it's going to just continue to grow because it's growing again. Getting big, we're getting lots of stuff again. We're getting all of these television shows and they are exploding with work for everybody. It's great. Now that we there are more people, even though that's what's changed over the years, it's better for us. It makes us a stronger, bigger family. And as long as we stay in New York City, uh, we'll stay strong.